Yeah. All right, guys, so I've got the heater now in the house. Um, I didn't video this part of it, but I hooked it up outside and let it burn to burn off some of the odors that a lot of heaters will have. Right now, it's upside down. So what we ended up buying to hook this thing up is uh, we got this flare fitting. This is a 3 8 to uh, 3 8 MPI. We have propane um, tape. You need the yellow tape and not the white because the white breaks down. We have a regulator, which um, I'm going to start with this one. I may upgrade to a two-stage regulator. Um, we'll see how it goes. But you need a regulator because you need to keep the pressure down. Uh, we have a 10-foot long uh, gas line. And this will connect to the propane tank outside. And basically, we're going to put it together. So I'm going to start on the appliance itself. And what we're going to do is we're going to wrap we're going to wrap our fittings with plenty of this Teflon tape. And what this stuff does is it guarantees you don't have gas leaking back into the house. And uh, hopefully my little helper here doesn't carry away all my parts. <laughs> I have to go looking for stuff. Hey, hon, I'm going to need that. Can you put it right there? All right, so what we're going to do with this, and I'm just going to swing this around so you can see. This heater has an LP and a natural gas side. The plug has to stay in the side you're not using. So don't take the plug out of the natural gas. And then you're gonna insert this thing here. And I like to start them by hand. All right, so now that we've got this here, what we're gonna do is we've tightened it by hand. Now we're gonna take an 11 16 wrench and we're gonna go ahead and turn it down. And uh, once again, I, I just wanna tell you, if you're doing this yourself, it's very, very, very important that you use that yellow Teflon tape. If you don't use that yellow Teflon tape, uh, you're going to be leaking propane back in your house, and that can be a serious problem. Okay, guys, so here's what we've done. We put the heater in place, and I measured where the propane line needs to go, and then I put the heater back, and I did that with a, uh, a little um, pencil, and I just put a little mark on the floor. And then what I did is I took a, uh, an X-Acto knife, and I cut a flap in the carpet. And the reason I did that is because I have to cut a hole here for the line to go through, and in the summertime, when this isn't here, I don't want to. I don't want to hold the floor, so this little flap is going to cover that. And uh, now, what we're going to do? We're going to take our bit. This is a three, uh, thirteen sixteenths paddle bit, and we're going to go right to the floor. And, and uh, I'm going to go kind of slow here because I don't think there's a stud here. But if there is, I'm going to have to move to a different spot. So um, we'll find out. So here we go. there's no stud that's the first hole and I'm just checking to make sure there's no wiring or anything in the way there shouldn't be in the slide we're in the we're in the actual slide yeah there's no no wiring in the way all right and that's gonna get me to the outside and uh, I'll see you guys on the outside when we run the line all right guys so We've got the line to the floor now, you can see here. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to hook our compression fitting up. Now the reason we wait to do this at the end is that this thing here turns and will attach to this without turning everything else. So you gotta, you got to do it in the proper order. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this thing up again with a nice heavy coating of some Teflon tape keep it from leaking. And then, I don't need to videotape this, but it's just a simple matter of screwing the two of them together. So, I'll see you when it's all done. Uh, all right guys, so now the, the gas line's hooked up, run to the floor. What you need to do last is make sure you're set to the LP, because I'm running on liquid propane, which is right here. And basically, you take the cover off here, and this is just something that you can turn. So I've got it set to the uh, liquid propane, and replace the cover. And then you want to bolt it to the floor, and I'm not going to videotape that part because it's you can't see what I'm doing anyway. But there's two little holes here in each each foot, and you're just going to bolt that to the floor to keep it from falling over. So um, I'll show you guys here in a minute the heater running and uh, keeping us warm. Thanks for watching, hey guys. Here's the heater installed. It's running. It's got its own blower motor. 
um, that blows out the heat. Really nice. It's important that it's the blue flame style and not the radiant style in a small space like this because a radiant heater could heat the sides of the couch or the carpet. Um, so that's why we picked the blue flame model. I did tell you in my previous video, I talked to you a little bit about how I got the deal. Um, this was a display model at Lowe's. They had it marked down to $100. And the uh, customer service associate, whose name is Jeff, um, he, I talk, did some talking with him and negotiating, and I ended up getting it for $75 instead of, uh, instead of $100. Uh, this fireplace shield that's here was also on sale. It was normally $40, and I got it for $10. Uh, it was their display as well. And then all the plumbing parts that we needed to hook the heater up as well. Total cost on the project was $131. And uh, the heater alone by itself, new in the box, retailed at $199. So I got a really great deal. And, um, you know, if, you just, if you're willing to talk to some of the associates in the stores, you can get deals like that if you're willing to look around. So anyway, I just want to remind you to please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also look up Roadstead to Homestead on Facebook, and we also have an Instagram to check us out there. And uh, I appreciate your views, and stay tuned for more videos.